Hey guys, it is Saturday morning here in the Philippines and we are going to go ahead and do our weekend showcase video. And this is going to be a part one of part two because I promised I'd bring you guys all the transporters that I have from Greenlight, Hot Wheels, and M2. But honestly, in this video, all I could fit is the Hot Wheels. As you can see, it kind of took up my entire table that I do my videos on. Mr. Norms is sitting on the edge and everything else has been moved to another location for this presentation. So what we have here are all of my Hot Wheels team transports, which honestly, it's not a lot considering how many are available and how many like four piece sets are available and such. And I also threw in the originator of like team transport in my opinion. It's the RLC Snake and Mongoose sets from 2011. So these guys back here, I think this is where they got the idea for team transports, but um, they didn't launch the team transports until like six years, seven years later. But in my opinion, that's kind of like the first team transport sets. So brought them back out to show you guys again. Uh, if you want a closer look at them, I did a Snake and Mongoose video which uh, I will leave the link for it at the end here of this video. So you can click on that and go and check out all my Snake and Mongoose stuff. Um, and it'll give you a more comprehensive view of these because I'm not going to take them out of the showcase this time. It's just kind of a pain in the ass to keep pulling them out, putting them back in. So I'll just leave them in there. Then I also brought back out all of the rare variants um, so they're probably the three rarest team transports in my opinion. I think they're uh, rarer than the Supreme and also the Walmart uh, set that's available now. These Will variants I think are much rarer, but that's my own opinion. Uh, also brought out a combination of a truck and trailer that I put together. Um, it's a Hot Wheels 100% truck and it's a green light fifth wheel trailer. But uh, the cars on the back of it are Hot Wheels. So it's back here. We'll get a closer look at it. I brought that out because I want to get my hands on the new Summit Team Transporter with the Vega. So I brought out Grumpy's Vega and put it on this truck and trailer. And also in that same case is a truck and trailer set. The first truck and trailer set from Hot Wheels uh, that they have released in the Team Transport. Usually it's always been like a rig with the attached trailer, attached box, ramp back, whatever. So this is the first one with like a hitch and tow like look, like green light. So that's pretty cool. I think it's like a Lancia set or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what the vehicle is. Um, but that one I'm not so amped to get. Uh, the only one that I really want to get is that uh, Vega from Summit Racing because I love that casting of the 76 Pro Stock Vega and we'll go ahead and bring that out since we're on the topic. Here's Grumpy's toy from Vintage Racing and this one I absolutely love one of my favorite cars from that series and this is the first appearance of that car they've done a few other appearances of it I have the one in the other racing series that is uh, blue with flames. It's really cool, but the one with the Summit livery on it is absolutely awesome. Uh, big fan of Summit. Always went there. Growing up in my teens, my 20s, building race cars with my old man, we lived in Cleveland, so Summit was just like 30 miles south of Cleveland, so it was very handy when you're in the hot rodding scene and muscle car scene. So... That's that. And then since we're on that, I will bring out the truck and trailer and show you guys. So here is Grumpy's toy 67 Camaro. Um, this is from the Hot Wheels Hall of Fame series from I think like 2003, 2004, something like that. Uh, may have even been a little later than that. I don't recall. But a really cool piece. And then the hauler for it here i'll bring it out as one unit as you can see this is their 100 percent 99 chevy or 2000 chevy crew cab slammed on the ground dually uh with a green light fifth well trailer and if you didn't know when these are in the little i think they came in oil cans they didn't come into the display case it the tonneau cover flips up and it has a fifth wheel and as you can see what I did, since my fifth wheel has a female end and so does this trailer, 
Well, I used a toothpick to make a double mel end, so it works actually really nice, as you can see. Now, if you had a piece of brass or aluminum, probably would even be better. I just kind of improvised and worked with what I had, so toothpick worked quite well. Uh, so, really cool setup. Uh, and this truck is really badass, too. As you can see, it has, like, the big Mickey Thompson street tires on it. Uh, instead of, like, double wheels, guys used to do that back in the late 90s on their tow vehicles. Instead of having the double tire, they would give it that tub pro street look and put the Mickey Thompsons on it, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's, like, my tributes to like a Hot Wheels hitch and tow. So wish we would see that kind of set up in the team transports with two vehicles, maybe in one of the box sets. That would be a really, really cool release. And speaking of box sets, <clears throat> I brought out my three box sets that I've unboxed for you guys, both Nissans, which are right here, both with the aero lift. And I wanted to point that out because last time I said they probably had the same wheels, but they don't. Um, and they actually have different color beds. So this is the first box set release ever, the Nissan, with the blue slide back and like a Wantanabe style looking wheel or mini lights, whatever you'd like to call it. I think that's what's on this. It may be a split five spoke too. But I think it's like the 10 spoke mini lights. But anyways, uh, this one has the five slot gray wheels kind of like most retro rigs i think that's why they made the mistake on the box and called it a retro rig because most of the time we're used to seeing that wheel and tire combo on the aero lift and then we're used to seeing this wheel and tire combo on the retro rig but if you notice on your skyline box set they all were errors as saying retro rig instead of the aero lift so basically that's your differences in the box sets the trucks the aero lifts is the slide back is white on the new one to go along with the all white skylines and then the blue on the first one and then the first set you had your custom 240z with the new style six spokes which is a pretty cool looking car then my favorite is the laurel and looks really good a lot of guys had taken the um i forget the name of the the hauler which i don't have any here uh with the ramp style back to it they've taken the one from the european set and put this laurel on it because the wheels and paint kind of match together pretty nicely so it looks pretty good with this setting on the back of it then you have the all famous 510 wagon with the cato house logos and such on it so pretty cool then the other one, you had your three Skyline GTRs, the 32, your 33, and then your 34. So pretty cool. If you haven't seen my pics on Instagram yet, check it out. I did a pic with this aero lift in the box. But instead of having these three GTRs, I have four R35 GTRs uh, in the set with um, one on the back and then three sitting next to it when they're all Liberty Walk. All four versions of the white Liberty Walk that you can get from Mini GT. A pretty cool setup, so check that out. The Instagram link is in the description of the video, so you can go directly to that pic and check it out. So... Moving to the third box set that I have is the Black Hole Drag Racing set. This was the one that I was anticipating most because it has your 55 Chevy with the Black Hole paint job and then it has your 65 Mercury Comet Cyclone with the Black Hole paint job. Then it came with the Nova once again. And... There's also a wheel variant on the retro rig of the Nova, not in the box set, but in the blister pack stuff. It was in correspondence with the wheel variant Fair Lady and wheel variant 190E, which we'll go over those. 
now since we're on the topic. So this is also like a shade variant. Um, as you can kind of see, it's really hard to see actually in the camera, but this one is a little bit darker than this one. This is more like a semi-gloss matte finish. This is more like a black primer finish, and it's really hard to see on camera, but in person it's much more transparent. But I guess in some ways you can kind of see that's like a little bit lighter. It's more of like a gray, or not gray, but black primer. So this is your Will variant of the Retro Rig. This is ultra rare, hard to find, Australian release only. These only came, became available in Australia and some Southeast Asian countries. Hence why I found them because, well, we're in the Philippines and some of them kind of bled over into this region. So this is the rare one with the gray hubs. This is your typical one with the five slots. As I was pointing out on the aero lift, that's kind of why they probably mistaken and put retro rig on the uh, aero lift, where it should have said aero lift on that box set for the Nissan Skylines. But anyways, this is your ultra rare variant of the black hole set. Um, so next is the Secura Sprinter with, I think that's a Secura Sprinter, isn't it? Yes. So this is the same rig that comes in both Will variants. The Will variant is on the Fair Lady. So your Will variant, which this is I one I really dig. This has the four spoke in gray with the chrome trim ring. The wheels are much more transparent and visible and they just look more correct on this car than just the black uh, five slots. The black five slots are okay, but for JDM Fair Lady, these look more proper and a little more transparent since they're like a light gray with the chrome trim ring. And it's very, very rare. This is the one that I said was like the Australian release. You would have gotten like that one, then the Grey Hub uh, Supernova uh, Black Hole set, and then this 190E. This guy here, which is your Fleet Flyer. Nothing different about the Fleet Flyer, but the 190E on the other hand, instead of having the matching six spokes like the Fleet Flyer, it has the five spokes on it, which this looks actually more proper in stock for the car. Although I like the bigger diameter six spokes on it, I don't have that variant of it, but uh, just have this one. And I didn't keep many of my Euro team transporters, this and then the RWB Porsche are the only ones I kept. This one I only kept because of the rarity, because it's, once again, ultra rare, hard to find. So that is your third variant for the wills. So that is why I have that. And then the only other Euro team transporter that I kept is this guy here because I love the RWB Porsche casting. I love this purple color. And then the gold six spokes on this car looks killer. So just all around a really badass looking Porsche. So, yeah, that's the only like Euro cars that I have from Hot Wheels. I have the other RWB uh, Porsche from Hot Wheels too. And uh, that is pretty much it. Um, I do have the Euro MV set coming. Uh, we will probably be unboxing that next week, or we'll be unboxing the latest releases from Mini GT. Whoever gets here first is the one we'll be unboxing. So that will be my next Euro Hot Wheels. I don't have many of them. So the ones that I favor the most out of all of my team transports are the ones that are on top of the RLC sets. Snake and Mongoose, of course. Love this set, and I know a lot of people say, what's the difference in the RLC? What makes this so, uh, like, 
What makes the RLC sets so desirable compared to these? It's mainly in the truck. The cars are predominantly the same. The only difference is on the stripes. The stripes on these do not have the stars. And the RLC sets, they have stars. And then I think the engines are slightly more detailed. But besides that, it's the exact same vehicle. Now the rigs, on the other hand, these are made after some imaginary truck that's kind of based on a Dodge or a Ford. Kind of a combination of both the cab is. And it's a single cab. Now, if you look at this guy here, as I said, we're not going to take him out of the box. But looking at the truck, you can see it's a double cab. And it's based on a Dodge D700. You can see how much beefier the cab is and the front grille and everything compared to the retro rig. So, we'll kind of put them like that. As you can see, the D700. Much more detail, much beefier. Roof height is even bigger. And then, as you can see, it has a double cab. Even the like toolbox area for the vehicle is much bigger on the D700 and it's also recessed. The front of the funny car actually goes in there and gets kind of encased. And you can see like the diamond plate bedding and such, much more detailed. But funny car is pretty much the same. As you can see, the headers on the funny car are black instead of being chrome on the team transport and then there you go with the stars on the RLC and no stars on this one. And then there may actually even be some slight differences in the side tampos. There's probably more tampos on the RLC set and even the quarter panel decal you could see on the RLC one is Pennzoil, on this one is Bell. So the RLC one's going to be more accurate. But still, the team transport, the funny cars, as I said, are almost identical. Uh, there's more detail on like the parachute area, if you can see that, how the parachutes are painted black. This one doesn't have that, they're painted red. But they did do tail light detail on all of that stuff. So, still nicely done on the team transport. So, the other set that I really dig is this Demon set. Love the Hot Wheels racing theme, the retro rig. It seems like most of my favorites have the retro rig. I like the Black Hole set too. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of the black back wheels on those, but that's my perspective on it. This set however is really really cool i want to get the muscle car box set it hasn't become available here yet and when it does well i've seen it a couple times they want like 40 and 50 bucks for it and i'm not paying that because i know it's kind of flooding walmart in the states right now but anyways uh i want to get that because i like the retro rig paint job it has like a pattern style paint job that kind of resembles like the 60s and 70s like show cars so that would be a cool set to have um, and so next is the corresponding snake set to the mongoose set. Once again, the exact same thing, the differences. Truck is majorly different, totally different casting, and then the CUDA is pretty much the same, minus some side decals and then the stars on the stripes, or in the stripes, I should say. Now, we'll move these guys out of our way. Since we looked at them, except for the Superbird, we'll come back to him. So, this CUDA, actually, the Team Transport CUDA, I like the paint a little better. It's a little more glossy and vibrant than the RLC one. So, the paint on the Team Transport is really, really shiny, but... As you can see, it's same kind of thing, like the side tampos on the CUDA here compared to the CUDA here. There are some slight differences. Once again, the quarter panel saying Bell on the Team Transport, whereas in the RLC set, it has Pennzoil. So those are your slight differences. And then like the B-pillar, on the Team Transport, there's no decal. 
as you can see there there's no decal and on this one there is the decal and it's also got some trim going around the back part of the roof it looks like so those are your slight differences nothing too major uh just a little bit of stuff here and there no big deal just a little bit to signify one is RLC, one's team transport, I guess, is what they were trying to do, is like not totally repeat the vehicle like they did with like the Black Hole Nova and the box set and the regular team transport. So moving along, one of the most useless transporters I think that they made is this thing here. I uh, really don't know the purpose because even when it teeters back, you can't unload anything. You can't load anything like that. So it's like totally useless. But the cab looks killer. It does look like a uh, the 800, Ford 800 or whatever it is. It looks like an old fire engine cab. Uh, so pretty cool. That's what Ethan keeps calling it was a fire truck. So he's right. It does resemble a fire truck quite a bit bit but like if you would just take these red like a stands or whatever you want to call them upside down v's with this teeter-totter thing off then it would be a great transporter just make it a one car thing where it's actually functional but besides that i mean it looks good just this setup here is worthless in my opinion now the gasser on the other hand that came with it, it's pretty cool the comet racing and such and this came from a gasser like club i believe their um logo is on here this yellow gasser's logo and if you notice the boulevard nova the 63 nova the purple one that they released a couple months back has this logo on it so these kind of car these two kind of go in correspondence together Purple Nova and the Cyclone. I think they're from the same like Gasser Club, Gasser Team, whatever you'd like to call them. But a really cool Comet. And I think you guys seen my video on the Comets too, where I showed you mostly every rubber tire release except for the Peppermint Twist um, convention car. That's the only one I don't have that has rubber tires. I have every other rubber tire variant and there's a couple plastic wheel variants I don't have. Actually the first release of that car from RLC was plastic wheels. It was like the Neo Classic Redline uh, style wheels. So before I forget this Superbird we'll bring back. This one I love. I actually love this transporter because it does look like a 60s like drag car or NASCAR transporter with the tire rack there. Um, and then it does have a little bit where the front end is encased a little bit, kind of like the RLC haulers, as I was pointing out. Um, just overall really cool looking with the 76 station, uh, tampos and stuff on the car. Looks really cool. They did a great job with this. This transporter, um, wide open. I think it just reappeared for the Hoonigan uh, Baja Beetle. So that's a very cool transporter. Probably one of my favorites that's not functional. The most like functional and like accurate would probably be these aero lifts because the bed slides and tilts back. It's actually functional, which is really, really cool. So uh, one transporter that's not bad, but it's really kind of funky looking is this horizon hauler and it just it looks like an old ford but with an inverted front end it just doesn't look right if they would have just done it totally vertical straight up and down it would have been a beautiful concept great looking hauler but with that inverted front end it just looked kind of stupid stupid in a way but not as bad as that fire truck looking thing with the teeter-totter so this one i can deal with and the vehicle it came with i really can deal with the swinging thing so based on a 69 dodge dart hemi dart at that with the radius not radius but lifted quarter openings to clear the slicks actually hurst and mopar did that on the 50 
or so factory when it was 50 or 100, I can't recall. But anyways, they did that from there and then I had a glass front end and so forth. So this is a really cool casting. I would actually like to uh, take one of these and customize it and make a gray primer body with the black primer front end to kind of represent exactly what they looked like when they left the Hearst shop and were distributed to the drag racers. So another vehicle that I praised at the end of 2020 was this car here. Really love the way this vehicle looks. The radius quarters with the flares, the wide body look, the lowered stance. Looks just like a road racing 65 vet would have in like the Trans Am series. Really cool looking. And then the Fleet Flyer ain't too bad either. Um, just I prefer the ones where you can see the car when it's on the back of it, but still not too bad. Dig the Fleet Flyer. So, probably uh, my favorite JDM release so far is the Aero, or Aero Lift with the R34, the Nismo R34, which looks really cool. Once again, did some pics on Instagram of this with the Boulevard Nismo with the same paint job and the Mini GT R32 Nismo, and they look great next to each other. All three of them lined up with that silver paint and the Nismo graphics, pretty cool. So this is probably my favorite JDM set so far. Uh, still need to pick up the Advan R32, and I need to re-get, or I shouldn't say that, it's really another word, but I should get the Advan Skyline van again. I had a couple of them and sold them, traded them when they first came out, just because I liked the Skyline wagon stock looking without the race tampos and things on it. It just didn't seem realistic, so I got rid of it. So I would like to get that back and add it to my collection, but the price nowadays is crazy. So I will be happy just to get the R32 and then I still need to get the 64 Galaxy, which also has that stupid teeter-totter type of transporter. But still yet, like the Galaxy, would like to get that set too. And then the new Vega set. And then I do have the 32 Ford coming with that old retro style looking hauler. That's a really cool hauler too. It looks like it's based on a 30s Ford fat fendered um I don't know, like 3500 style truck. It's really cool looking, like one ton or whatever you would call it type of pickup. Uh, so last but not least are our last two JDMs. Now, the Bree Dotson one, I don't know what happened to my Dotson 510. I may have sold it because I was running out of room at one point in time, but I wanted to keep the transporter because I put it with my green light Dotsons. And I had the green light Miho Brie trailer and everything, so it looked really good together. And these little guys from Green Light are more accurate than scale. And I had number 35 and number 46 and number 85, so they all corresponded really nicely together. So I think I sold my Hot Wheels number 68. I'm going to have to try to get another one of them, too, unless it's hiding somewhere. So it may still be hiding somewhere, but I actually think I ended up offing it. But that's why I brought out the green light car to kind of represent what Hot Wheels had. That's what number Hot Wheels had in the back of this uh, Sakura Sprinter or Fleet Flyer. Sorry, yeah, Fleet Flyer. Um, so the next is a Sakura Sprinter. The JDM L, the one with the Hako. And this Hako that came with this truck, I really dig. The tampos for the front end, the headlight covers, the inner cooler, and the hoses, the red match, like Wontonomy style wheels, tail light tampos, and this was definitely not the time for Hot Wheels to do away with the roll cage. This would have been perfect with the roll cage, but they did not use it unfortunately and there's not a variant either i figured this would have had a variant of cage and no cage figured that would have been the variant on the black hole nova too is cage and no cage but it didn't quite work that way so 
Guys, that's a quick overlook, even though it's been a half an hour, look at my team transporters. So we will come back tomorrow with some stuff from Greenlight and M2 and take a look at them. We've already done a comparison of all of them, and I will go over that with you guys tomorrow, where to find that link. But today I'm going to leave you a link here on the left for the Snake and Mongoose tribute video so you can get a closer look at these RLC sets. And then I left an icon here on the right for you to subscribe, so don't forget to do that. Enjoy your Saturday, and I will see you guys tomorrow for the part two of this series. Thanks for watching.